I figured I'd go over a little bit of what we've done. So, in the last video, we were talking about all of this here. Now, this is not the same coat. Um, I'd sanded it down and it looked decent, but I didn't realize there was a lot of fish eyes and there was a ton of orange peel. And so it allowed rust to come up through the material. And so now I did it again. Get some of the water out of here. But well, it went through and it's really nice now. So that has changed. The mirrors have been polished. They're, we're sticking with the mirrors. We're going to try and get the scratch out of the door. Um, we need to do some paint work. I need to do some cleaning. We are going to try and get this car moved into the garage here soon at the house. But we are looking at cutting here and we're going to go with a chromoly tube front end. Because this front end, unfortunately, has a lot of Bondo on it. Um, they tried to cover up some really lousy metal work with a fair bit of Bondo. So we're going to have to get rid of that. Um, the rack and pinion, I'm not sure what the true condition of the rack is. Um, it might be savable, it might be trash, but we're going to see what's possible. Hope when we do the front end, we're going to put a crossbar to, to uh, reinforce. So we're going to go either tower to tower or tower to firewall to tower. And we're, we're pretty sure everything's pretty darn straight. Uh, people are saying, oh, like it's off half an inch. But uh, we actually measured it against a 01 Cobra convertible. And the shock towers seem to be straight. There's a little bit of damage down there, stuff like that. But stuff that's not going to totally matter. This doesn't affect the mounting point. But we're going to be chopping the front off. Going DOM uh, tubing back here. We're gonna have to drill spot welds and we're gonna pull this out. And we're either gonna try and just push these out and maintain structural uh, rigidity, or we're just gonna put a new piece on because I've got a parts car. Um, what we found is that the body, as I was hoping, as I expected, is straight as an arrow. Um, all the damage occurred up front. Uh, what we think happened is either, we don't know exactly, and. I'm not sure who the original owner is or how to get in contact with him, the one who had it when it was wrecked at first, but we think that it got punched up here and it bent this nose section over a significant amount that they pulled it back and put a used core support on. Because if you look here, those welds are kind of rough, just slightly rough. But uh, torque boxes are pretty solid. Um, a little bit of bulging on that one, but nothing we we don't think that could be worked out. I had a, a body guy come look at it, or a frame guy, frame tech come look at it. And he said, yeah, your car is savable. It's mostly just everything in front of the shock towers. At the, yet the shock towers may or may not be out of skew. We didn't have anything to measure it at the time, though. But we're going to go ahead and very soon we're going to start cutting. I got a sawzall from a pawn shop. So I'm kind of going into this completely without tools to do it. So everything's one step at a time. But uh, we're going to go tube front end and tube your K member. And uh, once we do that, we'll start buying and hanging body panels. So we'll find fenders, we'll find a bumper, we'll find a hood. Make sure everything lines up and start making tabs. And then it's time to look at wiring and interior. Once wiring and interior is done, the frame is straight. It'll be time for the IRS. Once the suspension is uh, sorted, we're also going, by the way, coil over. We're ditching the McPherson strut setup so we can get better handling. Um, we may go to a one turn rack so that way I can autocross it because this can be an autocross and a road race car. However, we're going to do enough to the rear that it can go down a quarter mile or even a half mile with little to no effort. But 
We're also gonna do door cards, which is why there's one sitting out here in the leaves. But uh, this piece, there was a piece that ran through here that was sheared right here. And so I pulled that off and we covered it. This isn't gonna be permanent, that's just temporary. But one of the things that always kept my hopes up with this car, let this car go by. It's, we're right off the main road here, so it's not like the quietest. But this is one of my favorite parts. If you listen closely, the door hinges are super smooth. We've got some boxes of like tools and stuff. Not tools like sandpaper and bolt organizers and stuff. So we can keep everything generally kind of organized as we go through our process of rebuilding the car. But the donor car is going to donate some decent parts. I've got the other door uh, completely skinned on the top. We're going to go with a leather with blue stitching is the plan. And we're going to do a gold pinstripe that's going to follow the top body line here. It's going to just follow this line all the way to the corner. And uh, we're going to do bronze wheels. Bronze pinstripe or gold pinstripe. Gold wheels or bronze wheels. We don't know yet. Kind of just depends. But, uh. As we kept looking into it, we kept finding more and more parts. Um, some parts are at my buddy's house getting cleaned up. But really, the car, a lot of people thought I was crazy. A lot of people still think I'm crazy for this car. But I have my reasons. This car sat in Florida for a ton of its life, so it's kind of not had a ton of rust issues. The only imperfection in the body is a little gulf, like marble-sized dent right here. And you have like a little bit of rust on the door, on the leading edges of the door, or, or it's done primer. Those two little spots, a couple tiny roof spots, the surface rust on the frame, you had where I've just primed, which was a little bit of rust. And then there's this one little spot down here on the quarter. But besides that, the car, the body's incredibly clean. It has 50,000 miles on the body. And it will be zero when we start because, or technically zero as we are going through completely to where, me mechanically we're at zero on the body or at 50. But that's the car. And I, I didn't really do an overview. I did a first video talking about repairing it and doing the rust repair, but I figured it was best to just go over it fully. But uh, yeah, this is our number one concern right now. I gotta figure out how to get a Team Z tube front end. Probably gonna go pre-welded, it's more expensive, but with a pre-weld we can just stick it on there and bolt everything up, weld everything up, weld it directly to the car, make sure fenders will fit on it. I'll get a cheap set of fenders or I'll bend the ones back off the donor car because the donor car ones are bent but as long as I can just beat them straight they don't have to look nice we just need something to do fitment tests and make sure we can get everything but the the donor car is going to donate some decent components like headlight bar or headlight bracket and stuff like that but this is the car that will be the number one project on the channel but as well, I might do some content about the wagon. It's sitting back here. We had some friends over at a barbecue last night. So I got forced to park on the outside in case I needed to go get anything for the barbecue. We just had some bratwurst. Nothing fancy. But when we were doing that, I uh, started thinking and throwing some ideas around. The thing is, with going with a tube front end, a lot of these cars have an issue where you cannot put long tubes on them without dropping the, the K member and everything. But if we're going a tube front end, we can just slide them in from underneath. So there are some inherent benefits to going to a tube front end, in addition to just being cheaper. But that's what progress we've made so far. But it seems like a long way to go. Most of it is just going to be the framework, the wiring, and the engine. Because the interior, we have a decent chunk of the interior. We just need to refinish it. 
Because, like, we have seats. The seats are not the nicest, but we'll make them work. We have door cards we're going to redo. I'm probably just going to be conservative about it and just take what pieces of leather on the seats I can save and just restitch them to new pieces and just kind of fade them in, weather them in right so they look right and all straight. But really, that's the only other thing, and that's just bend that piece back out. But we need like a gas tank, we need a K member, Team Z tube front end. Uh, luckily, I've got the wing already, which is cool. That's really nice to have. Uh, picked that up for cheap, bolted it on, fits really nicely. Needs a little bit of touch up. There's a little few deep scratches into it to where I'd have to put some filler and just kind of fill it in and repaint it. But for what we got it for and as far as the project it's a big project but it's not undoable it's definitely doable if you put the time in now that i think about it i don't know if that's really too out of whack i don't have another mustang to compare it to that firewall might not be pushed in on that corner at all because the matting that's there is right there is flat it's not stressed but yeah it's pretty darn i mean it's not clean it's right inside there's a bunch of stuff but as far as rust like this is some of the only stuff and that's just stuff i've just got to hit with sandpaper and just cut it back and then prime over it it's really a really clean car and i think for sitting on a trailer in florida for most of its life as of as of recently really saved the car but i'll come back next time we have a reasonable update of any notable progress and i hope to get a decent tripod after some time and set it up and we'll do some time lapses and other work on the car Especially when we do get around to doing the front uh, cross member and the whole front removal process. But uh, anyways, thank you for watching and have a great day.